Hello, and welcome back to General Chemistry 1. My name is Daniel, and in this video we're going to be introducing a unit called the mole. So when we're looking at chemical reactions, we think of an atom reacting with an atom. But since atoms weigh different amounts, different amounts of different compounds are going to have different numbers of atoms. For example, if you have a gram of carbon, that's going to have a different number of atoms compared to a gram of chlorine because of their different atomic masses. So moles are a kind of way to normalize that and make it and give us an easy unit to use when we're looking at reactions. So using moles is going to be very important as we move on in the course. First off, let's define exactly what a mole is. So a mole is just simply defined as an Avogadro's number of um, anything, really. And Avogadro's number is just this number here, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power. So any amount of that, anything of that substance is a mole. For example, one mole of eggs would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd eggs. One mole of carbon atoms would be that many atoms. One mole of carbon dioxide would contain 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of um, um, carbon dioxide. One mole of carbon dioxide, since there's three atoms per molecule, would contain three times as many as Avogadro's number of um, atoms within the molecule. So every element has an, a certain atomic mass, as we saw on the periodic table. An atomic mass worth of an element is known as a mole of that element and contains Avogadro's number of atoms. As we see down below here, as I said before, chemistry involves reactions of atom versus atom and molecule versus molecule. So what we see then is that one mole of carbon is going to weigh a different amount over here than a mole of chlorine, but they're going to contain the same number of atoms. And that's going to be useful when we're looking at stoichiometry and reactions, when we're looking at how much of something reacts with how much of another reactant. So let's get into converting between grams and moles then. So we can look on the periodic table to get the, mole, the, um, the atomic mass of each of these elements, and we can convert it into moles based on how much of a certain element we're given. So for example, we have, first we have 14.01 grams of nitrogen. So we look on the periodic table, we see that nitrogen has an atomic mass of also 14.01 grams per mole. So what we're going to do then is convert in the following way. We're going to set up this little fraction over here. On top, we're going to say that one mole of nitrogen contains 14.01 grams of nitrogen. What you see here, what we've done is we've just set up this little um, fraction which you can multiply the original number by. We see that the grams of nitrogen cancel out, and our final unit is simply going to be in moles of nitrogen. So if we do this, it's just equivalent to dividing by 14.01. So that means we have one mole of nitrogen in 14.01 grams. Next thing we can do is convert that then into how many atoms there are. So we're going to say that there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in every one mole of nitrogen. And so that gives us simply 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd um, atoms of nitrogen. Okay, so that's a nice, easy, foolproof way to convert. When we use this fraction over here, as we did over here, that's going you know, to make sure that our units are canceling out correctly, that making sure that we're not multiplying we when we should be dividing or dividing when we should be multiplying. And you can use this for any kind of conversion, from grams to moles, moles to grams, what have you. So take a second to pause the video. See if you can do the next two on your own. Okay. So let's look at the second one for calcium. So for calcium, calcium has an atomic mass of 40.08 grams. So what we're going to do then is we're going to do the same thing we did for nitrogen. We're going to say that one mole of calcium contains 40.08 grams of calcium. So that means we have two moles of calcium. Then we're going to convert that into how many atoms there are, the same way. And so that gives us two times Avogadro's number of um, atoms in this sample of calcium. That number turns out to be 
1.204 times 10 to the 24th atoms of calcium. And then finally for vanadium, vanadium has an atomic mass of 50.942. So same thing we're going to do in this one. We're going to say that one mole of vanadium contains 50.942 grams. So we do that and we get 1.494 moles of vanadium. Next we're going to convert that into atoms the same way we've been doing before. Multiply by Avogadro's number. So this many atoms in one mole of compound. We see that moles cancel out here and we're left with uh, 9.0 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of vanadium in that sample. So doing this is going to be extremely important in the future. Converting from grams to moles, back from moles to grams, which we'll do in one of the next slides. So definitely take the time to practice doing this and make sure that you're able to do it without making any kind of arithmetic errors. If you do an arithmetic error in one of these things, obviously your entire problem is going to be messed up because of that. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide where we're going to talk about something called molar mass. So a molar mass is going to apply to both atoms and compounds. A molar mass is just the weight of molecule or weight of a compound that contains Avogadro's number of molecules or the weight of one mole of compound. So the molar mass of a compound can be determined based on the molar masses of the elements it's comprised of. For example, down here, we have carbon monoxide over here. We said it contains if we have one mole of carbon dioxide, that means we also have one mole of carbon and one mole of oxygen. So to find the molar weight of carbon monoxide, CO, all we have to do is just add up the molar weight of carbon plus the molar weight of oxygen, and that gives us a total of 28.01 grams. We can do the same thing for a compound like CaCl2. One mole of CaCl2 has one mole of calcium, as well as two moles of chlorine. You'll note that it has two moles of chlorine because of this two at the end of the stoichiometry of the molecule. So we're going to do the same thing there. Just add up the molar weight of a cal one mole of calcium plus two times the molar weight of chlorine. So that gives us a final molar weight of 110.98 grams. Finding the molar mass of a compound is pretty straightforward, but it's also going to be an extremely important thing to be able to do. So let's take the time and try and find the molar mass of some compounds. Once again, pause the video and try these out on your own. See if you can add up all the atoms to find the molar mass. Okay, so let's look at the first one. First we have H2SO4. So that has two moles of hydrogen, one mole of sulfur, and four moles of oxygen. So we're going to have something like this. We have two hydrogens times a molar mass of about one, plus one sulfur, which has a molar mass of 32.06, plus four times 16, which is the molar weight of oxygen. So if we add all those up, we'll get 98.06. And the units for this molar weight are in grams per mole. That signifies that there's 98.06 grams in one mole of H2SO4. We're going to do the same thing for this next two. So in C6H12O6, we have six carbons with a molar weight of 12, plus 12 hydrogens with a molar weight of 1, plus six oxygens with a molar weight of 16. You do the same addition over there, and you get 180 grams per mole. Then finally, here in the third one, we have multiple moles of N2O. So the first thing we have to do is find just the molar mass of N2O. That is the weight that's in one mole of compound. So that would just be 2 times 14 for nitrogen plus 16, which gives us um, 44 grams per mole. But now we see in this sample here that we have three...